Grading difference can also be done with a, a guarantee. USP, unique selling proposition and guarantee, can work together. In fact, you'll find there's a number of USPs out there that are really guaranteed, so they can work together. But why does the guarantee work so well? Think about how that purchase decision is made. Why does a guarantee work so well? Does it work on the logic side or does it work on the emotion side? It works on the emotion side, yeah. And that's why guarantees work so well. Why does a guarantee work? Well, it, it, at a deeper level, it increases confidence, gives security, reduces risk, builds trust if it's written well. It creates a difference. And here's the real deal. Lots of business owners, solopreneurs are reluctant to build a guarantee because they're afraid it'll get, they will get taken advantage of or that it'll be too expensive. But the fact is, you get to write it. You get to set the expectation in the marketplace. It just needs to be unique, right? So it's okay, you can guard yourself on that so-called guarantee. So work with uh, Peak Performance Business Coaching, and we guarantee you'll find your fee in 120 days, or coaching is free until we do. Nothing vague about that. Oh, hey! Hello! Get the look. What's my time, Mom? I must click the projector. I don't know. Fix me. Fix me. Now it's going to take a minute. It sleeps for a minute. Okay, let's see. Oh, it timed out. Sorry. Let's see. Um, all right, so guarantee works why? Because it, it's after the month. Here's a great, I think the tool is in your workbook, and you can work on this for a second. So there should be a page in your workbook that, um, page six, right? And, and a great way to start to identify what a guarantee is, is to look at the frustrations that exist in your industry. People doing business with people like you. Not necessarily you, but doing people, uh, people doing business with your industry. And down the left-hand column, identify well, what are those frustrations. Right? What, are the what are the frustrations dealing with uh, plumbers? Give me some. Not showing up. Not showing up. What else? Overcharged. Oh, overcharged, right? First price is never last price. Leaving a mess. Leaving a mess. What else? Not done right the first time. Not, yeah, I didn't have the part. I'll be back in two weeks when I get the part. We'll, we'll, you know. Didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Okay, so those are all frustrations, right? And you can do the same thing in your industry. So list the frustrations, and then in the middle column, I want you to identify what you can do about that frustration. All right, so a plumber who's, who guarantees that he will be at your house no later than 15 minutes after the set appointment. I'll be there at 3, and, I'll, and I won't be any later than 3.15. Now, I can plan my day around that. All right, I can plan my day around that. All right. And I'll be out of the house with the, with the job done right. I'm making things up. Um, or the second visit is free. Oh! Would you do business with that plumber? Absolutely. Am I coming? Here we go. All right. Thanks, Elise. So on that page, then you go down the middle column and you identify, well, what could you do about that frustration? And then in the third column, you rank yourself as critically as possible about how good would you be at doing that thing where five is the highest and one is, hmm, I'm just thinking about it right now. So if you have a high frustration and you have something you can do about that frustration at a high level, verbalize that and have a guarantee. Does that make sense? Strikes right at the emotion. So uh, successful guarantee should be specific. Uh, here we go. It addresses the main frustration. I should make that plural. Addresses the main frustrations and fears of customers in your industry. It needs to be complete. Either this happens or I do that. Because a vague guarantee has the exact opposite effect, effect of what we would want a guarantee to do, which is to reduce risk, right, and strike the emotion. If it's a vague guarantee, people will go, "Oh, I don't, I don't trust you." All right, I don't, that that. 
uh, that's going to work against me, right? So a vague guarantee works against you. Um, and last, uh, ought to be impressive. Ought to be impressive. So that page in your book, I'd, I'd ask you to sit with some other colleagues or just sit with yourself or sit with somebody and say, what frustrates you with doing business with a company like me or companies like me, right? And fill out that page. You'll have great, great uh, information to develop your, your guarantees in USP. Number three, all this is really, really critical. All marketing materials, particularly in the size of businesses that we are in, all marketing materials should be created to generate a direct response. Well, what do I mean by that? Versus what, Dave? Well, there are marketing materials that are designed simply to build image, right? I don't think there's any Nike swooshes in the room here, right? I don't think there's any Coca-Colas in the room here, right? We're not about building brand identity right now. We're about getting leads. Would that be most important to us? So getting leads is direct response. And that's not the image building, it's direct response. And it's what we would call salesmanship in print. How many of you have, um, excuse me, I'm moving a little too fast. How many of you have salespeople feet on the street for your companies? Get the genie you would, you do here? Okay. All right, so the rest of us don't have the luxury of that, really. And so we have to have leverage in our marketing. We have to have leverage in our sales. So that's really salesmanship in print. Direct response. Mostly small business, of course, salesmanship in print. Understands the customer's wants and needs. It gives information to the customer to give them control over their buying decision. Each of these points need to be triggered in your direct response campaigns. That's the only way well, the call to action is the only way you're going to get the kind of response that you want. Language is everything is something that we say in, in my firm, and we work a lot on language. Here's the four components of a marketing campaign. If you can, if you can answer these questions for yourself for every marketing campaign you do, you'll have a much more impactful, if that's a word, results. First, identify your who. The who is your target market. You need to identify that first. Make a list of your target market participants. Quit rolling around. Right? You can have more than one target market. You can have more than one. In the beginning, frankly, in the beginning, just starting up a business, we don't know this, but we probably have 10. Right? We're taking business from, like, anywhere. Well, that's not really effective. Right, that's not your sweet spot. I know a small web, web developer that we've just started to do some work with, uh, started up his bid, what, nine months ago or so, and, and was chasing revenue, right? And I understand that, I really, really do, I get that. I, res I respect the fact that you gotta do that. They took a job that was much bigger than their sweet spot, and it killed them. Took both owners off the street, they didn't have time to do any business development, at least not developing business that they really, really wanted, and that big job cost them a lot of time cost them a lot of time. And it was also unfortunately someone that wasn't paying them on time. So that was a double whammy. But anyway, define your target market. That's the first thing you have to do and that's the who. Where can you go to find out and help you define your target market? Your A and B clients. Your A and B clients will give you a hint. Oh, and by the way, use that, that sheet on demographics, buying behaviors, and psychology to help you define it as well. So after you have your who defined, the next component is the where. Well, if I want to speak to business owners of small and medium-sized businesses, where do those people reside? Where would I find them so that I could talk to them? Chambers of Commerces, right? Uh, they also affiliate with other people that serve that target market, but don't compete with me, like CPAs, right? attorneys, financial advisors. So that's the where. Once you define your who, then you define well, where are they. And all this stuff will build on itself. Once you define out, find out the where, the next big key is, okay, well, what do I tell them? What is my 